My name is Jensen Karp, and I'm a professional comedy writer, producer, rapper, and former morning show DJ. But above all else, I'm a sports fan. And I'm going to be honest, I'm extremely worried. Without any sign of competitive athletics worldwide, I feel pretty awful. So it got me wondering, if I feel this bad about it all, then how do the athletes feel? So that's what this podcast is all about. I'm talking to the athletes and sports industry professionals to see what they're up to, how they're holding up. Are they alone with people? Where do they hide from their family? I'm able to do it in plain sight. So without further ado, this is the No Sports Report. I sat next to Chris Cyborg on a plane once. I knew it was her because she has a tattoo on her forearm that says, Chris Cyborg. We didn't talk at all over three hours, and I'll tell you why. It's the same reason I didn't bring up this flight during the interview. It's because I'm terrified of her. She's the only MMA fighter in history, male or female, to become a Grand Slam champion, holding world titles across all four major MMA promotions. Currently signed to Bellator, she's the women's featherweight world champion, defeating Julia Budd by TKO back in January. And, while doing research, I found an old video of Chris being interviewed with a translator, and it looks like there was some sort of confusion with what he asked, and then she choked him out in like three seconds. Not a joke, it's bonkers. But I'm dealing with a chiller cyborg now, a robot with a new motherboard. She's raising money for COVID-19 victims, asking everyone to join her workouts online, and humbly ready for her next opponent. Or sport. And will we ever get that Ronda Rousey dream match? Even if it's on Vince McMahon's dollar? Well, let's find out during my discussion with the champ and future American truck driver, Chris Cyborg. Call from Land Grand Champion Chris Cyborg. To accept, press one. Press- Chris, are you there? Yes, I am. How are you? Oh, Chris, I'm so happy to have you on this. Where are you hanging out during this time? I'm in Huntington Beach. Staying in, in home and going to my place I train. It's mm-hmm. like private place, but like in my garage. That's it. Stay home. They go to the supermarket and they have to buy some stuff. They come back home. So I've seen you playing video games on Twitch recently and, and, and you raising money. I think you, you worked with some other celebrities and raised over, I think, $2.5 million on Twitch for COVID-19 yeah. research and help. That is a crazy number. How did you get involved in that? You know, I like to help. I like to do stuff for the community and it's going to be help for the people with coronavirus and all the things people are going through. It's, it's a pleasure for me. Yeah, and I, I caught you last night playing a little bit of Doom. Uh, what have been some of your favorite games to play on Twitch during the quarantine? You know, I'm, I start liking the basketball. You know, I have I have some fighting too, but I enjoy doing the basketball. You're playing you're playing NBA 2K. Yes. Oh, I might have to watch that. I might I might be into that. What team What team are you picking? I think I did last time I did it Las Vegas. Oh, you're playing as the WNBA team, Vegas. That's amazing. Yes. You know, this is actually the first year that they added the WNBA teams in there in order to to be able to play every game with them. Oh, nice. Yes, I have fun. Great. So another thing, too, is you've been doing these live quarantine workouts every Thursday on YouTube with your daughter, Gabby. Yes. I, I have been nervous to join in uh, because I don't know if novices can participate. I, I think I've put on about eight pounds since this quarantine started. I... I'm so embarrassed by my by what I've been doing. So can anyone join in on these YouTube workouts? Anyone can join. We do three rounds, like 20 minutes of workout. But there's three rounds of five minutes. You have one minute break. And it's easy workout. Everyone can do because if you need to do it slow, you can do it slow for starting. And everyone can do and enjoy. You know, I bring my daughter with me because she can do people watching. She's learning to every movement. And in, and it's very nice when they bring her. Everyone can do it. You're welcome to, to do it for me next Thursday. I love it. I, I will be in this Thursday. Nice. Uh, regarding your, your workouts, the ones that aren't on Thursday where uh, novices like myself can participate, uh, you had stated that after winning the world championship across all four major mixed martial arts promotions, you're the first person, man or woman, to ever do that, that you wanted to train for a boxing belt, get into a whole new median. How does coronavirus affect that progress? You know, I was training every day, you know, work out every day and learning, improve my boxing. I still want to do this, you know, I, I still want to do um, my fight, my next fight boxing. And I was talking to Scott already for you can do this plan. Mm-hmm. But of course, you know, I'm going to do what my manager with Scott is going to agree, you know, for, for any way to, you know, now I have to wait. 
just keep in shape, you train at home, and keep in shape for the next opportunity. So how long would it take you to switch formats completely, to go from MMA to boxing? I mean, how long would it take you to train for something like that? You know, I would think about maybe three, four months, not training every day, three months every day. Okay. Uh, my coach said I think three months is going to be enough training every day, uh, only boxing. I think it's going to be good. Yeah, I mean, because I've seen other interviews with you that you've done during the quarantine. You've done a couple of them, and you seem so relaxed about it. I mean, if I was going to be changing over to boxing, like completely knowing I can't use my kicks or anything like that, I would be so scared. <laughs> I'd be like, I need a year. But you're so relaxed about about that transition that you're going to make. I train in the old sports separately. When I started my career, now, okay, you see some MMA fighters starting MMA, but I start everything separate, and after we put together, I, I like competing like just jiu-jitsu, just Muay Thai, just wrestling, because you learn a lot when you do separately. And for me, you know, for me, it's a big challenge for me, boxing, you know, and I like boxing, so watch my fights. I really enjoy, I use most punches. I have jiu-jitsu, I have, but I like to be strike. For me, it's going to be a big challenge and going to be different than my reality in MMA. I'm able to train and learn and open for that. No, I'm not. I'm never going to underestimate you in any style. What do you think about Dana White wanting to basically rent out an island and run weekly fights? I thought it was like an onion headline, like it was a joke. But it seems true. In your opinion, should UFC just take the time off and not be looking to becoming like their own Dr. Moreau? You know, everybody has to be quarantined. It's a rules for everyone. You know, a lot of people don't want to be home. A lot of people are struggling now. I think personally, I think you should do something different than just think about yourself in the boxing MMA fight. I don't know. But, you know, I, I think it's better to wait like everyone and for respect, you know, respect everyone. Because it, even though the fighters have to be together for training, you could say, OK, I'm going to make an event now. Do you think if you didn't say, OK, Chris, you're going to have a fight, I'm going to have to make my team. Yeah. You know, I have to put my team together. We're going to be together training and then put the risk of the family around you. No, I think you have to wait and respect the pro the process. Absolutely, be patient. I agree. And now you're in Bellator. You've made the move over from UFC. Uh, Bellator decided to cancel all their currently scheduled events while UFC still ran in an empty arena. You tell me, as someone who's been in both of them, how is Bellator different with their fighters? It just seems like it's a more caring organization in that way. And and what has your experience been with Bellator so far? You know, I really enjoyed the time work with Bellator. They really treat us, all the fighters, differently. I feel very appreciated over there. I don't just feel I'm the one more. I think it then they ever want to have a special place over there. It's great. It's good to hear. Uh, talk about another company quickly that is still running events during this quarantine. You've defeated Shayna Baszler, now a champion in the WWE. Is that ever on the plate for you? I saw, especially with that being the only sport happening, but I saw you tweeted about enjoying WrestleMania and you've whispered a little bit about retirement from mixed martial arts. Is there a way we could finally see you in a WWE ring soon? No, I don't think I'm going to, if it, this is have the opportunity for me, I don't think I'm going to retire. Maybe if I do, but maybe you should do one challenge for maybe I may do one parents or do one on like a season together. I think I, I like, you know, same I'm doing the boxing. If I have the opportunity to WWE, I'm going to train and be working for it and do my best I can. Mm -hmm. I like challenges in my career. And my, my fans like that. They know they're going to follow me where I'm going. But I don't think I'm going to let it stop the MMA for, for the WWE. But if I have the opportunity to just be there at some point in my, my career, it's going to be nice. Because I'm a I'm a big wrestling head. I'm a big sports entertainment guy. And this would create the dream matchup of you versus Ronda, possibly, in a WWE ring. Is that is that a goal, maybe, in your head to see that? That's a real money match. You know, as imagine, if, imagine if this is happening, the fans going to go crazy. Exactly. It's going to be nice, you know? I think it's cool if you don't know, have the opportunity to have the MMA, if you have the opportunity to do Pro wrestling, I can't know what to do, you know, let's see, she's already there, you know, she's would like to do, I'm here, we can do something cool, I think for the fans, it's going to love, I think it's going to be very cool. Yeah, Vince, Mc Vince McMahon would be dumb not to do it. Is there anything during this time, on a positive note from this quarantine, that we've adapted during the virus that you hope continues to happen when we come out of this? Like, for example, I'll give you mine. We need to wash our hands better. This is not something that we ever focused on. I know that you yourself have posted videos about this and the process of 20 seconds and using soap, and, and we all need to adapt that moving forward. Is there something for you that you've seen during this time that you think we should do even when we get out of this virus? 
I know, I think it's the first thing, you know, everybody say, ah, when you have a humidity low, you can get sick very bad. I think the first thing you have to get a healthy, what you eat, for sure, like wash your hands, because it's very important to do this every day. Mm-hmm. Appreciate what you have, you know, every day, you wake up in the morning and appreciate everything you have, you know, sometimes we don't appreciate, sometimes not. Now we have to be in the house, you cannot leave, you cannot go anywhere. Sometimes you do this because you choose to do this. Because now we cannot leave. You know, sometimes you get out to walk a little bit, breathe, I don't know, do something different, stay with your family. Sometimes the parents work so hard, they cannot give attention for the kids. And now then they're learning more about them. For sure, it's important for them when they're growing, you know, growing up. Yeah. And I think a lot of things people are going to get out of this. Okay, have the bad part, but we have to see the good things too are going to come from this. Totally. It's kind of like a beautiful reset in that way. I mean, unfortunately, there's so much negative that's involved in it. But if it does allow us to take in things with a little more... Uh a little more attention, I think that would be great. Yes, it's true. In addition to the video games and uh, the workouts on YouTube, is there anything else that you've found, you know, as a new hobby or something you've taken up during the quarantine that you may not have done before? Uh, for now, you know, I, I, I love reading. I read more than before. I'm studying a lot. And, but I think the new thing is play video games. I really, I really know the person like to stay in front of the TV play video games. Mm-hmm. And uh, I really enjoy and learn it for me to new thing to do. You're originally from Brazil and you still have obviously family and friends there. How have they been reacting to, to coronavirus and the quarantines? Yeah, you no, know, I talk to my family every day and it's, it's very hard time for a lot of people. I, I'm thankful because you no know, I, I make money when I fought and they just fought January, but I know how a lot of people are very stressful now. And they just praying and then for this is have find a resolution for everyone. And I talk to my family, then okay, you know, everybody healthy, everybody okay, safe in the home. And- Great. Well, here's how we end. It's usually pretty stupid here. I'm going to give you some suggestions of things that I think you could take up during quarantine. I'm in no way, shape, or form strong enough to ever tell you you need to do these things. But these are just suggestions. Some people have liked them. Some people have just sort of giggled at me. Okay. But these are three things that you, you could take up. All right, let, let's start with this. I am a big fan, and this is not a bit. This is a true thing. I'm a big fan of watching competitive eating on YouTube. Have you ever seen any of these? <laughs> No, but I, I see a little bit, but I was never, I watch, I think one video is crazy. It is totally insane. <laughs> it is, yeah, it, maybe they're yeah. going to watch some. Okay, good, because it is the true opposite of what you're doing with your live quarantine workouts. <laughs> Two people that I'll suggest to you, Matt Megatoad Stoney, he's incredible on YouTube and a, and a superstar in competitive eating, and then Molly Shiler, who is the, the most prolific competitive eater, I believe, man or woman. She is sort of the cyborg of eating. You know, but sometimes here it's, a, it's hard to stay home all the time, okay, and do the workout, but okay, you come to your room and do read. And I say, no, I'm going to drink something. They go to the kitchen and eat something. My mom <laughs> makes cake all the time. Yeah. And there's some different cakes in Brazil, and then you eat all the time, eat all day. It's crazy. I agree. Well, if you want to see someone eat 36 pounds of, of oysters, I got I got you covered. Secondly, for your Twitch channel, I have a game for you to play that I think people will like watching you consume. Are you ready for this one? Yes, I'm ready for this one. Okay, it is called American Truck Simulator. It is very popular on Twitch, and it truly is, in real time, someone driving a truck and moving freight from one city to another. It's beautifully, it looks like the perfect city. You go through Phoenix or LA or Vegas. You know when I'm teenager, people call me the handball truck driver <laughs> because I'm very strong. <laughs> and I go through ever the girls in the, in the game. Uh, I don't, I hate this, this, this nickname, but it, it just reminds me. <laughs> yeah, I figured people called you truck driver because you had like a dirty mouth because you said bad words, but you're saying it's because you were strong like a truck. <laughs> No, it's about Europe game. It's not the wall game that everybody thinks. Yeah. And then you, you play against, and it's a very rough game. And then they call me to drive. I don't like <laughs> Yeah, because but before before you were a, a fighter, you were a, a very seriously professional handball player, which yes. in America, like you said, we think of it as sort of an elementary school game. Yeah. Where you are, it's it's full contact. It's like Mortal Kombat. Yes, it's very strong, mm-hmm. technical. It's a very cool game to watch. I really enjoy it. And play. Yeah, maybe I'll take on that as a YouTube channel uh, while I'm in quarantine. I'll watch some some serious handball. Okay, lastly. Yeah, watch that. The Brazil is good. Okay. I will. Lastly, uh, this might not be an original idea, but I think this is good for you and maybe not for Dana White. I want you to rent out an island 
and I want you to fight people who aren't washing their hands. <laughs> this is a good one. Okay, because it makes this me very angry. I've seen you. I've seen you. Oh, I just brutalize people before, and I am so angry. As are you. I've seen you post some videos about people who aren't taking this serious. Weekly, you'll just post up a thing: cyborg destroying someone who's who's not washing their hands correctly. Oh no, or me, and then I'm gonna have too much opponent because everybody's <laughs> crazy the virus now. Yes. Everybody wash their hands. Very good now. Okay, good. I, I <laughs> Maybe just somebody coughing in your jacket. You're right, coughing. I did imagine <laughs> you in sort of a John Wick way, just taking on a full hallway of people. But yes, that would work. You are a total superstar, Chris. I'm so happy I got to speak to you. And I, again, the idea that you've had a belt in each one of these different companies is just unreal. And I'm, I'm so happy to have spoken to you and, and keep up. I'm going to be working out with you on Thursday. My wife and I will sit down. We will do the YouTube workout with you and Gabby. And, and again, thanks for, for talking to me. Okay, thank you. I really going to see. I Please leave a comment for me. I really want you. You're going to enjoy training first Thursday. Thank you for joining me. you here with me. Say hello for the wife. I will. I appreciate your time. After this break, we'll check in with a friend of mine. You know him from a league of sorts. I know him as a fellow Clippers diehard. It's the first installment of Fandemic. As you know, communities are experiencing these difficult times differently across the country. Feeding America is working tirelessly to ensure our most vulnerable populations, students who are out of school, the elderly, individuals whose jobs are impacted, and low-income families continue to have access to food and other needed resources during this emergency. The Feeding America Food Bank Network is committed to serving communities and people facing hunger in America during the COVID-19 pandemic. Right now, their greatest need is donations and support of local food banks. This series is committed to donating all proceeds from the show to Feeding America, and we hope that you can join us in this effort too. Find out how you can help at feedingamerica.org backslash COVID-19. In a feature we're calling Fandemic, I'm going to reach out to some of my sports-loving pals and find out how they're doing without the ability to watch their favorite teams. First up, he's one of the funniest people in podcasting and a man who once shot the hot dog-shaped t-shirt gun at Staples Center. It's fellow Clippers apologist, comedian Paul Shear. Okay, I got it to work. Hello? Thank you for doing this, Paul. I know this has been a few months of mourning in many ways, but I figured we'd lighten the mood of being so sad in coronavirus to, to talk about how sad it is for us to be Clippers fans in a shortened season. The curse continues, Jensen. <laughs> the Clippers curse. Uh, normally, we bring it upon ourselves, but this time, uh, outside forces have conspired to potentially end the NBA season uh, making the Lakers the de facto champions, which make it even worse. It wouldn't even be the Bucks; it would be the Lakers. I know, I, guys. I, but I don't come know. If, on. I don't know if I agree with you. I can't give a de facto championship to anyone. I consider the season asterisk beyond belief. I don't give right. even best record. I think the way you know injuries happen nowadays. This it, we can't say what would have happened for sure. I think that anyone who takes the mantle and says that they deserve. This championship, even though there's a bylaw that gives it to them, they should never like. They should go down a peg. Like you, you cannot, you cannot wear this championship. This is not an earned championship because the truth is, I think the bylaw creates the best record since like February. So it's even a, it's a bizarre. It would be a bizarre thing to take pride in. You couldn't make shirts. You couldn't say we got another trophy. Put another banner on the wall. It would. It's an embarrassment. It, it really is. Like it is not. A, it's like um, you're psyched that you had sex with your sister. It's more embarrassing <laughs> to, than 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 the, the victory of having sex with your sister or having sex. If there is any fan base who might enjoy it, it could be the Lakers. One hundred percent, because you know that the Lakers fans are like, we did it, we did it. But here's the truth, everybody. I know that millions of people are out there suffering, uh, but the truth is this: uh, when it comes down to uh, down to the facts, the Clippers have won the season over the Lakers. They are the true champions of go. LA, two games to one, yep. and that will never change. That is on the record. That, that is. is locked in. Can't do it. But I do like the idea of like a ticker tape parade through Staples Center area in like Pope mobiles with just people looking oh. outside their windows. Everyone in masks. By the way, here's, here's how passive aggressive I am oh. about the Lakers right now. Uh, I've been doing a lot of NBA 2K, yes. which I've been loving. And I love that you get these cards and you can build up a whole team. Mm -hmm. And one of my most passive aggressive things that I do in that is I make LeBron my sixth man. <laughs> so I do have a LeBron card, but I make him come off the bench. <laughs>
I do want to talk to you about that because you're my one friend who has somehow uh, allowed your thirst for the NBA to be fulfilled by watching players compete at NBA 2K on ESPN. Yes. Well, it's funny. You know, I think all of us, you know, you and I are both parents and it's hard, right? It's hard to be a parent when you can't take your kids to a playground. You yeah. can't take them to play dates. You can't, you can't do any of the normal things that we come to rely on as parents, besides just be with your kids an X amount of time during the day. So I've really fell into video games and I love NBA 2K and now watching players play in the video, the graphics are so good that I was actually watching, like, watching these games. Like this is like a good game. This is a, I'm enjoying the game. Not like, it's not like watching tech mobile. It's like, uh, this kind of is scratching a niche that I need to be filled. And I think we should do more of it. And I don't understand why we're not just playing out the season. Uh, like let's just have a different clipper every night. Just play out the season guys. Let's do it. Yeah. There are guys who are doing it. There's, there's basically full teams. I know they were, I guess it was like Sacramento. The Suns, are doing it, the right? Suns yeah. The Suns were thinking about playing out yeah. their whole season. And then they saw how many games they lost in simulation and were like, oh, I, th- I think yeah. we're over this. <laughs> I was almost going to play as the, uh, for the Clippers when the Suns were going to play them. And I got real nervous though because I felt like holding that on my shoulders was too much. I don't know who I was going to play against. You know, I'm not like, I'm not saying I'm the best. I mean, you know, like I'm not winning any money in NBA right. 2K championships, but I, I, I do enjoy watching other people play. Um, not on Twitch. I want to see it on ESPN. We just need better announcements. You want to see pros on ESPN? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. I, I, I like to imagine you all excited. Okay, I'm going to try my hardest. And, like, and for the Phoenix Suns, Ninja. <laughs> and you're just up against yeah, like the exactly. best video game player in the world. Well, that literally is what my fear was. I was like, who am I yeah. playing, though? Who am I playing? <laughs> They're like, well, we can't yeah. tell you. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. I need to understand who I'm playing because it's like I don't want to take a loss for the Clippers and then get that ire from the Clippers fan base. You know, yeah. I, I, need to, I need to play somebody of, uh, of equal skill. As yeah, that. you know Paul Shear from such shows as The League and losing to a nine-year-old in NBA 2K on ESPN. <laughs> be a total disaster. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so you were a season ticket holder for this, this past mm-hmm. year. Have they, have they sent yeah. out refunds yet? Oh, God, they're never sending out a refund. I've already paid for next season. <laughs> like, you know, they're going to just like, they're just going to like fold this back in in a weird way. We're like, well, actually, what you've done is you've, uh, you've actually not upgraded your seats. So we'll give you two extra seats. You're never going to see that money again. And I'm right. fine with that because ultimately, uh, I know it goes to so many people. And, and that's the truth of the thing. It's like, I am bummed out because I'm such a Clippers fan and I'm not being able to see them. But I also understand how many people are out of jobs. And, and, you know, I think about that, not only the people that work at these big giant things, but all the commerce that goes around outside of this. And I know it's silly to say, but it's like the people who are selling those crappy t-shirts. It's like, these are people that rely on that, that have nobody to help. You know, it's like Steve Ballmer, amazing, gave so much money for uh, coronavirus aid. And uh, it, that's amazing. But it's like, are these other people that make their livings kind of on the on the outskirts of of these arenas? Like what's happening to them? And so it's it's it is upsetting. And you know, every now and then I'll indulge just being really bummed that we won't be able to see the end of the season. I don't think unless something magical happens, like they're doing with the UFC, where they're flying I- <laughs> fighters into a private <laughs> island to do these matches. It's like straight up Street Fighter style. Hey, we there. had we had Jay Williams on this show, and Jay Williams had an entire theory about letting players go compete in the playoffs on cruise ships. Well, that seems like a terrible idea. It, it, cruise ship brought this here. It wasn't a good idea, but it was genuine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, do, I do believe that there is a world in which, you know, if I've heard about this magical place in like Las Vegas, where you could really keep it tightly organized and maybe even do like, uh, this is my addition to it, video press. Mm-hmm. You know, so the press wouldn't even have to be in there. You could do it all remotely. And I think what they should do is like bring in the person from like Big Bang Theory yeah. to do um, all the audience sound effects. So you do get like, you know, you have somebody really controlling like, yeah, ooh, MVP, you suck. You know, just, like, yeah. just have like one guy in a booth hitting a bunch of buttons. I would love to have the button for bring in Taco during the Celtics games. <laughs> it would just be from the beginning bell until the final bell, just bring in Taco over and over. It's Taco time. Uh, what have you been doing overall in quarantine? What has it been like? 
Well, Jensen, I'll tell you this much. Um, we had a little bit of a, a crazy moment yesterday, which is our, and you don't even know this yet, but our three-year-old broke his arm. Oh, no. Um, yes. Uh, he was just, look, we're, again, we're keeping our kids literally trapped inside a house. Yeah. Uh, and we bought a bouncy castle, just like a kind of a cheapo thing you get on Amazon. And he just they jumped the wrong way, landed on his own arm and broke it in two bones. And uh, he's cast it up right now. So that was a really traumatic yeah. uh, moment for us. But uh, besides his spirits are great today. Okay. Besides that, we have just been like kind of running a schedule and just teaching school. Um, I think my wife and I have been doing a great job. I think it's really hard on any relationship yeah. to be with the person that you're with 24 seven. And, uh, you know, I think, I think anybody, any relationship, that's a toll. And I think we're just being really respectful of each other in our time. I think when the kids go to bed, we just kind of go in our separate corners because we've been with each other all day. Yeah. And, you know, it's about trying to find time to, to work. So it's nothing exciting, but we're getting through it. And I feel like in a weird way, um, those are the negative things, but the positive things have been, it's been great to spend all this time with my family. And like, yeah. we're home for dinner every night. We're, we're giving the kids a bath every night. We're, you know, up in the morning together. So there's a really like great sense of camaraderie. It's just the scariness of the abyss. It's like doing prison time, but having no idea what how long you're in there. Boy. Yeah, I do love that. It yeah, is, like, it is. Maybe. We know we're pecking away at the thing behind the poster. You know what I mean? We're pecking away at that yeah. wall with yeah. a chisel, but we just don't know how big the wall is. Exactly. It's like, I'm trying to be optimistic and enjoy watching movies and, and playing video games. Thank God for Animal Crossing, which oh. someone deemed, uh, not me, but someone deemed it, uh, Fortnite for moms, and, <laughs> uh, and, yeah. and I'm all on board with has that. There, has there ever been a product sold at a more opportune time than Animal Crossing during quarantine. I think that if you know anything about, uh, you know, people that are listening, anything about this new service, Quibi, that just came out, yeah. which is like these short-form TV shows, right? I think that they thought this is what people want. I know. Short-form content for fast life on the go. And what they, what they didn't realize was that Animal Crossing is what we need and want. Because we already have all the other escapes. Like, that, like, provides a sense of normalcy to our life, Animal Crossing. It's I like, know. oh, I'm going to go pick a turnip. I'm going to go put some flooring down in my house. It's like, I you know. just do something and you get immediate gratification. I love it. I love it all. Right now, our life is, like, moving like molasses. Yeah. No one wants, no one wants to be dealt a six-minute chunk of anything. We need, like... For, hey, is there a TV show that has nine seasons? Yeah. I'd like to get into that. We need the opposite of Quibi. Is there anything Ken Burns is working on? I'd be interested in, in his... <laughs> Can I watch some rough cuts of Ken Burns? Yeah, I want to see his director's <laughs> commentary. Cut. Well, Paul, I, I wanted to end on just you waxing poetic about a basketball player that both you and I find to be absolutely a game starter. This is the guy who changes everything on the court. And I know that you speak highly. You speak the name of Patrick Beverly like I do. Yes. Why is he Why is he the secret MVP of that team and, and possibly the true fire plug of the NBA? He's unstatable, first of all. Mm -hmm. like, so anyone who wants to come at me with any facts and figures, what he provides is unstatable. That's not me as a fan. Like, if, if he was not on my team, I would hate him. A hundred percent, because he gets in the heads of everybody else. I mean, I, I don't know if I would hate him. Even when he was going to go over to the Bulls, I was just like, oh, I was like, oh, no, no. Yeah. But I love Pat because I think what we're kind of missing from the NBA is this kind of an energy. Like, you know, even like when Harden was trying to start his big like, beef with Giannis, like he was kind of falling flat. And I think there's something about Pat Bev where it's respectful yet aggressive. Yeah. Like the way he covers LeBron, the way he talks about LeBron. It's like, yeah, we can take LeBron down a peg. He's the fun of the best basketball player of his generation. He's amazing. We love LeBron. I would never take anything away from LeBron. But yeah, we could talk some shit on LeBron. Why not? Also, why not? Like, like, and I, yeah. I love that. Like, take down some big pegs. Exactly. And what people forget about Patrick Beverly is that he fought his way to where he is today. Exactly. He is not in this league. He's not in this league as a lucky or a skill set, which he has. But don't get me wrong. That's not why he's in the NBA. He's in the NBA because Chris Paul recognized that he should be back in the United States and basically figured he's out a way. He's back from Russia. Yeah. He is literally rocky. And I've talked <laughs> about this a few times. One of the best games I've been to in in my Clippers history mm -hmm. was this season. I think the first home game where they played uh, the Celtics. It was the first oh. time that uh, PG and Kawhi yep. both played. And you know, as a Clippers fan, one of the most disappointing things is that you live in a transient city, LA. Like everyone lives in LA, so whenever you are playing, you know, a different team, all their fans are there too. And a lot of the times, especially because, Eastern squads like Boston, yeah. 
so when the Celtics are coming to town, mm-hmm. you're going to be surrounded by a lot of Celtics fans. Yeah. And there's a moment, though, where the, it didn't feel like a home game for the Clippers. And Pat Bev like, t- turned to the crowd and pumped up that entire arena. I've never seen a player do that in my life. I felt like that was the beginning of this moment where it was like, no, this is our home. Yeah. And now this is our team. And it was something really transformational in that moment as a fan to be like, yes. And I feel like from that moment on, we've kind of been on that track. And, I, and that to me is Pat Bev, somebody who can change the temperature of a stadium. Agreed. He's yet alone on yeah on the and, on the court. And as soon as we trade him, we'll hate him. That's the the uh, the, uh, the, know, the Matt Barnes syndrome. I, I will tell you, I, I do love my Clippers, and uh, and you know I have a soft spot for DeAndre whenever I see him. Yeah, same. Uh, and I and same for Blake and uh, Chris Paul, not as much, but uh, <laughs> and you know Boban, of course. Yes. There's so many of the guys that have gone away because I think when they've been here, a lot of them were just kind of chess pieces that needed to be moved to get to this team. So I think Blake got treated with the worst out of the whole group. But yeah, I mean, I'll try, I'll try not to hate. I just want to keep Paul George and Kawhi here. That's, that's the, that's the big goal right that's now. That's the dream. And, and, and we had an extra spot, man. I don't even want to go over that because it'll make me sadder, but we, we had some moves to make before the playoffs too. I know, I know, I know. but you know what? We we'll, we will see, and there's always next year. And Let's hope there's always next year. Don't say things healthy. like that. <laughs> Let's hope. Always, always next year. Yeah, oh, I know, God. but you know what? Here's the thing. I've been reading this book that you actually read. Uh, I think when you were having your kid mm-hmm. uh, with a curse. Yes. And there's something very hopeful, and it's just like we've been here before. We've been through the worst of it, and it's only getting better. Every year is getting better, and I think that the ownership there with Bomber has just been unbelievable and that gives me hope about the future of the franchise forget Absolutely. about the next two years talk about in 10 years when you're going to have kids who are going to be clippers fans yeah. over lakers fans because they're actually doing that work in the community and i think that's what the clippers organization needs to be doing is like Agreed. building the franchise into our youth and he took the form away from dolan you can't be mad at that at all he's he did, he's doing all the right stuff i i mean that that to me is the biggest baller move of all so <laughs> so like, good. like oh, i'll buy it from you yeah. in cash oh, I'll i can't buy it. Like, i can't, I mean, I can't build he, over here i'll buy yours <laughs> Well, thank you, and I can only hope that we are having a podcast where we talk current sports soon. But as until oh, then, I would love that. I yeah. would love to. Hey, look, you. I'll talk to you about how my my team is doing right now, and uh, we'll get on the phone again. And uh, we're having a great yeah. season. Well, we're good really luck to you in, in uh, NBA when they put you up against some nine year old unboxer on ESPN. <laughs> Wish you all sorts of luck. Oh my gosh! Uh, all right, well, go Clippers, <laughs> bud. Bye. Thanks, man. Bye bye. The No Sports Report is produced and distributed by Tree Fort Media. The show is executive produced by Kelly Garner, Lisa Ammerman, and me, Jensen Cart. Our series producer is Matthew Kugler. Tom Monahan is our senior audio engineer and sound supervisor with additional production help from Tim Schauer, June Rosen, and Haley Mandelberg. With production and editing by Jasper Leak. Our theme music is composed by Spilkus. If you've enjoyed what you've heard, please subscribe, rate us, and review us on Apple Podcasts. You have nothing else to do. Send it to your friends, tweet, share, post about it, do whatever you can. And please visit feedingamerica.org. And if you're able to make a donation, any amount will help make a difference. And you can learn more about other ways to help on their website. For more information on the No Sports Report, links to the socials, and for our show transcripts for the hearing-impaired listeners, please go to treefort.fm. Be safe and be well.